I would like to demonstrate extracting electrodes in Symmetron version 10. We start in an electrode setup wizard and we pick the uh, workpiece that we're going to be extracting the electrodes from. In this case it'll be a core. And we can give it an assembly name here. and we can create a subfolder as well to keep our work organized and we're going to work in inches if for example the coordinate system is not in the appropriate place we can quickly build a new one by going to UCS Center of Geometry we can box pick the part and it puts uh, points, it does like a bounding box type deal where you can position the coordinate system anywhere you like. Uh, it could be the center high point or uh, in fact even uh, without these points you can force it to go anywhere you want on the part. So for instance even though there's no point here on this hole I can choose to be at the center of that hole if I want to be but we're going to work to the center high point. So let's go to the top view and choose extract electrode. We position an electrode here. I middle click on my mouse to accept these as being the surfaces that I want. And over here we can change the size of the electrode. And we can also give it an angle if we need to and in addition to that over here I can choose to center the electrode to the surfaces and the next option allows me to do a fit and the fit gives it an appropriate amount of overhang based on a value that we store in our preference file so let's not apply a template with this one and create the first electrode so you'll see that over here it's building an assembly file for us all done automatically and I'm going to activate the component add the blank and uh, by the way these blank settings again are stored in the preferences so we're not changing these uh, you have the ability to change them but the value should be filled in properly according to your preferences so I'm just going to say OK. I'm going to add a coordinate system. This is the coordinate system that's relative to the electrode. Uh, you can position it again anywhere that you like. There's three dots sitting there probably as the right place. Uh, if you want to add any kind of rotation like 90 degrees, uh, that's possible to do as well. Let's add the holder. Um, I've got quite an uh, extensive library of holders. For instance, I've got um, 3R. I'm not going to use this one. I just want to show it to you. There's a 3R holder. I've got Aroa. Uh, but I'm going to use just a um, more basic holder. It's not quite as pretty, but it works better for my drawings. okay so here's the electrode all we have left to do now is put some extensions on it down to the blank this auto contour finds its way around the opening the extension allows me to go tangent down to the blank and now all these steps that we did over here can be saved as, as a template so let's go ahead and save these steps and we'll call this demo one and we'll go back to the main assembly file hide this one and do another extraction here
and this time we apply a template and we're doing this one see it gives a nice picture of what that template does and we say OK so all of those same steps are repeated over here <clears throat> to give me a new electrode at that location now granted these two areas are quite similar so probably you're not so impressed that a template that worked over here also works over here I understand however if that template worked over here in a much different area where the electrode is breaking out the side that would be much different geometry so let's try that template over here and there we go so the same template that worked on these two guys also works over here and not only does it give me a tangent extension to the blank in Z it also gives me a tangent extension to the outside of the base uh, coming out the side of the block which is nice so let's quickly go around here and extract several more electrodes very quickly you notice that I'm clicking on the small check mark in order to stay in this feature so I'm not having to go go back into it several times and anywhere on the screen when I right click the same feature guide here well this same feature guide shows up under my mouse the small check mark says leave me in this function I'm doing some more of them Okay, and let's just do one more. <clears throat> this one I'll show you the, the angle function. So it works like this. I click on reference line. I pick this edge. The electrode jumps to that angle. Then I do a fit. And then I do a check mark. So just like that, we've created several electrodes. And allow me to point out that when I go to the front view, these are all on a common burn depth which is pretty cool the uh, amount of clearance that we have is the same for all these electrodes and take a look at this for instance um, here how can we do this let's do a dynamic section through this one going in the y direction this electrode right here the burn area is down here and the software is smart enough to know that the extension needs to be a quarter of an inch or whatever value we give it from the rest of the workpiece. So even though I'm only working with this burn area, it gives me the appropriate clearance over the rest of the part. Okay, now this one uh, only gave me one extension because the template only contains one extension. So we've got to do one, two, three, four more extensions on this electrode. And even this can be done quickly and easily. I choose to apply a template from a reference selection. And I just grab one of these other electrodes. And it will actually add that template back in, skipping the steps. Uh, well, it tells you, it says it's skipping the blank feature, and it's skipping the UCS feature, and it's skipping the holder feature which is what we want. So there we go, we got all the extensions done on that one as well. Uh, let's see, so let's, um, yeah, let me demonstrate one other thing here. 
Uh, let's have a look at this electrode. And I'll just quickly point out the way that this works. Uh, when these blue surfaces were extracted from the core, these came in as a stitched object. Uh, but of course it's not a closed stitched object. It's uh, open on the bottom side. And even though this is open and it's not a closed solid body, I can still do things like put rounds on this. I'm not going to do it. I just want to point out that it's, we're capable of doing it. Um, in fact, let's do this. I'm going to stitch these guys together and then I'll merge it to the bottom base. So real quickly I can make this a closed solid body if I want to but it's not necessary in Symmetron we can work with open bodies. Uh, but let's look at some of the things that we can do here. Let's say that we wanted to get rid of this boss. We choose remove and extend. I pick the boss and make it go away. Or let's say we didn't want to do that. Let's say that we wanted just to offset it. We could choose extend object. and we could make the boss smaller let's say a hundred thousandths there we go so a lot of nice solid manipulation tools uh, that we can use in addition let's go back and let's look at how we make drawings. So we've got an assembly drawing that's pretty cool. Let's look at that one first. Here's the assembly drawing and what it does is it gives me a map of all the electrodes at their locations and it gives me uh, each electrode put out in an isometric view with the electrode's name and the burn location and the rotation values. It also gives me uh, a chart over here uh, where we can have the XYZ locations and the rotation values. While this is pretty sweet, uh, many customers don't use this because with our EDM setup, we're able to actually uh, post all this information directly to the EDM machine. Uh, so we, we send the locations, the, the uh, rotation values, the burn settings, uh, all kinds of information. Basically all the programming is post-processed and sent to the EDM just like a CNC machine or CNC mill I should say okay let's also quickly create one electro drawing Here we can see that the electro drawing is created. Uh, it puts some dimensions on here as well. And it gives us the blank size uh, to be mounted in the uh, electrode holder. We also have a burn drawing that gets made 
and this one shows the front view of the workpiece and the electrode, the burn depth, uh, the chart comes out on this page, uh, some generic notes that I actually have customized for mine, but this whole thing is customizable and can be set up in uh, a lot of different ways depending on uh, how you guys work. Okay, so <clears throat> let's close this one. And I want to very quickly demonstrate some machining. So let's first take uh, this one and we'll push this out to NC. And we're going to apply a template to this one. And I'm not going to do anything here except say calculate. The reason I don't have to pick any surfaces or define any start points or end points or anything like this is because all my templates are uh, built based upon color. We tell the software that the stock, the stock of this electrode is a bounding box for all of the colors. Uh, and then we can also tell it that we want to machine the blue and the green down to the purple. So based on colors, uh, the procedure is quite repetitive and predictable. So here this electrode is complete. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time here going over too much, but let me just show here's the roughing. The roughing has only got two rapids, one on the way in and one on the way out what we're telling it is that it can do mixed milling in the stock area but always take a climb pass around the part so that eliminates all of my rapids except the entry and the exit next we got a floor milling procedure comes in finishes the top with a bowl cutter next um, finishing the walls with a ball tool uh, I, I found that I got the best finishes with a ball cutter that's why I like to use that one if I show you this, uh, I'm starting kind of deep in. It's not a Z limit, it's an angle. So I'm telling it to, to not start at the top and waterfall over that edge so much, but start deep based on an angle. Uh, I think it's like 50 degrees and you can go more if you want, but um, I actually leave like 40 thousandths of stock on my rougher. In fact, let me just show you this. If I show you the remaining stock here on all of my electrode templates I'm leaving uh, a lot of material on the sides for rib type machining so that it's still nice and beefy and my finish cutter comes in and it takes like a 40 thousandths amount of stock all the way down so that's why I choose to start up a little bit higher than I really have to. Next we have the remachines. The remachines are really nice. We don't have to draw any boundaries or anything like that. It's all handled automatically because the software knows where the stock is and isn't. And you can see that the remachine is doing a nice helical motion going down the electrode, no lifts. And I get one more with the 116 fall. And by the way, you'll note here that the 116 fall doesn't go as deep as the 1 8 ball because I tell as these tools get smaller I tell it to stay further and further away from the purple there's no need for a 1 32nd ball to go all the way down to the purple it can stay further away <clears throat> and here you'll see I have no light bulbs for the 1 32nd and the 20 thousandths ball uh, the reason being when I show you the curvature map here the smallest uh, radius on this trode is 132nd. Therefore, the 116 fall finished it, and I didn't get uh, an executed procedure for the 132nd and the 20. But had I needed them, they would have calculated. So my template is always capable of calculating down to this, but it stops where it, where it, uh, where it needs to. 
Okay, enough about that. Let's program one more. And let's do one of these long ones. Okay, same thing here. We're going to apply a template. And hit execute. Now, this one uh, has a little trick to it. I know for a fact that my quarter inch ball isn't long enough to finish this electrode, and I do it on purpose. What we found is that many shops have went to a standard tool library where, let's say you've got a quarter inch ball, maybe that has uh, an inch and a half of length or an inch of length, and then you've got an extended version that's maybe two inches in length, and uh, some guys will say, well, I need this much length on this electrode, so let's machine it with a two and a half inch length cutter. Well, that means that you've got to run it slower. Uh, it's going to probably not give a very good finish. Uh, we choose not to start out with the longest tool needed. We start out with the appropriate tool, and if a longer tool is required, we come back and use it. And that's what we're going to demonstrate here. So here again, you'll see that I've got all these cleanup procedures ready to go. Uh, it didn't need them on this one, so I don't get them. Uh, here's the finished procedure that stops short. Uh, let me show you why. I go to the navigator. It stopped because the holder would have uh, crashed had it went any deeper. So it's always continuously doing gouge checking against the holder and it stops. It machines all that it can. You can see over here, because of the way this electrode is shaped, it can get down a bit further, and so it does. But you never have to worry about it hitting or colliding. So how do we address this? What we do is we go into the procedure, and on the third page, well first let's make sure we have a long, long enough tool. I don't have a longer tool in this file, so I have to get it from my library. I'm going to be using my Trode tool library, and here's a long version of the quarter inch tool. So I bring that one in just so I'm sure that we have it. I go over here and I go to the cutter page, and I tell it I'm using a multiple cutters. I then pick on the long one and push it over. And we can see here for the, the first tool, the short quarter inch cutter, we're taking a three and a half thousandths uh, side step and a five thousandths down step, 85 inches per minute in a spin speed. Um, oh, this should be 10,000. And over, and when I click on this one for the longer guy, you can see that uh, these values can be changed. We're taking a less of a side step, less of a down step. We can back the feed rate off, say to uh, 50 inches a minute if we wanted to. Maybe slow the RPM down to uh, 7,500. So we've got independent values here for the two tools. And I just say save and calculate. And the software handles all the rest. Okay, here we go, and you can see that this longer version, well, the, the longer version of the tool has a smaller down step. You can, let me go to a different view there. You can see where these steps are smaller right in here. So it's finishing up that area. Yeah, and in fact, this tool still isn't quite long enough. I can see that it's being limited by the holder down to this depth, but if we go to the navigator, we can clearly see that the uh, tangency of the ball is below the uh, uh, burn surfaces. 
So you could call that good or you could have this tool stick out a bit further and reach down to the purple. But it's nice, you never have to worry about the tool holder hitting because it's going to take care of that for you. Okay, um, let's just do one more tool path really quick. And let's take this guy. It's got this one is going to need a lot of picking. And we'll push that one out to NC. And so now with this one, I might decide that, um, yeah, let's use, I'm going to use the shaped top template. I really, really only have two or three templates um, that I use. Oh, and I forgot to show you the best part. Let me calculate this one and I'll come back and show you. So this one's going to require a lot of picking. In fact, uh, probably this isn't a very good um, example because I should have put radiuses on the insides of these ribs because uh, we offset that by a hundred thousandths. So we know that a one eight tool would be uh, sufficient for picking this out, uh, but I didn't put the one eight or the uh, one sixteenth radiuses on there, so it's going to try to pick this out down to a sharp, which isn't uh, very realistic. But it'll show you uh, how it works if that were the case. Yeah. So what I didn't talk about yet was overburn. Uh, I don't have different templates for different overburn sizes um, you know as you know overburn changes a lot with electrodes so it could be five thousandths could be ten thousand the way the way that this works is that up here under edit uh, we've got change spark gap and I just decide what I want it to be let's say this one's five thousandths I punch in five thousandths and it changes all of these to accept that so one spot to change your overburn and it all comes into play perfectly the other thing is that uh, while this is calculating I can actually create new procedures I could go in here it's doing background calculation so I can set up my next procedure and be continue programming while the calculation is taking place. In fact, we now have something called the super box where all of the calculation is done kind of offline. In other words, these calculations will be taken off of my computer and put onto the super box, which is basically like a network calculation device and it doesn't bog down my machine. I could be I could have two jobs open crunching intense cutter pass, push those off to the super box and be programming on my third job without slowing down any of my resources. When that calculation is done, it comes back to my computer calculated. It's uh, actually quite nice. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Like I said, this is kind of a poor example because obviously we wouldn't be picking this out in this way. But you can see that uh, if I go to the navigator, this tool is being limited by the holder. So it's only going to go down as far as it can and it'll stop. And actually, uh, like I said, this. 1 8 ball is really all that was required to finish this because of the amount that we offset. But these are uh, really nice paths. The re machines work beautifully. Here I've got a, a re rough. 
um, and what's really neat about this is that here I had a half inch bowl and if I show the remaining stock here you can see that that half inch cutter left really big uh, radiuses in the corner so when I came in with a quarter inch tool and left the same amount it went in and picked out this stock area just in those areas so it makes for incredibly efficient machining and I guess the last thing I should show would be the setup sheets We've got several different kinds of uh, setup sheets. And there's the NC report. <clears throat> And at the bottom it gives the uh, full total time and everything else like that. Yeah, in fact, um, let's go back. If you don't mind, I'll run a report and something a bit more realistic. Let's open up the uh, first one that we did. and do a report on this one yeah so this one's total time is uh, nine minutes and uh, it's not a bad cycle time with the amount of picking that we had done in the in this one Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, can't get much more efficient than Symmetron when it comes to making electrodes, machining them, making the setup sheets, posting it directly to the EDM machine, however you want to do it. Uh, this is the most efficient process.